Hey, how's it going? Now I know things can be a little confusing when you're new to Wreck City and you're barely coming out of the subway station, but that's why you clicked on this video, and that's why I'm here. Welcome to Run the Block, or better known yet, Wreck City. It's Wreck Room's newest Wreck Room original, and we got some things to talk about. Run the Block is a new Wreck Room original where you, the player, goes around and runs around the entire city to collect these little upgrade blocks that allow you to upgrade your player and get more skills and upgrades and stuff like that. You can also collect cash inside Run the Block, which allows you to upgrade your actual rank as well, thus allowing you to get more upgrades and even cosmetics. Trust me, trust me, we'll talk about the cosmetics later and stuff like that, but let's get into the upgrades. So when you're inside Run the Block, all you gotta do is go to whatever hand has your watch, look on the actual wrist part of your hand, and you should see the room inventory option. Click this little pink button, and of course you guys will see this. This is your entire upgrade UI, you'll be like rank F, so all of this stuff and all of this stuff will be blocked off, but this is what happens when you have access to basically everything. My current rank is C, and these are my rank up objectives to get me to a high higher rank and stuff. As you guys can see, this is all the collections and everything that I've collected throughout the map, and there's even cool little daily events that give you cash rewards. It also displays the amount of challenge medals you get and stuff like that, and we'll talk about the challenges later. Another cool thing about this UI is whenever you're through the map and you're collecting upgrade points and stuff like that, all of it goes to these actual upgrades. As you guys can see, you could upgrade your moving speed, your jump height, you even get like this little dash ability. You're able to wall run, rail grind, stomp, and even double jump. Essentially, the higher rank you are and the more upgrade points you find, the more you can basically do inside of Run the Block. Now having upgrades like the dash and stuff like that, or having the stomp ability, allows you to do certain things that you wouldn't be able to do without these actual abilities. And these abilities can even contribute to faster challenge times as well. What are these challenges, you may ask? Well, don't worry, I'll tell you right now. These challenges are scattered everywhere inside the Run the Block map, and they're basically just like little races that have checkpoints that you need to follow, and eventually get to the finish line. Based on your performance, which is quite literally just your time, you can either get as Asphalt, bronze, silver, or gold. Now the faster time you get, the higher rank you actually get on that challenge, thus meaning you get more rewards, like cash bonuses and extra upgrade points and stuff like that. It's also even a part of your rank up objectives for whenever you actually need to rank up and stuff like that, to get like silver on challenges and stuff like that as well. Now there are about 23 challenges inside the game right now, I'm pretty sure, and they're all just littered throughout the map with their own individual names, little, you know, setup routes and everything. Now these challenges aren't all that are inside of Run the Block, no, no, no. Inside the map, there's these boards that show off the next public event that go off in like 30 minutes, 25 minutes, etc. And these are basically just events like 1v1 races, last man standing, free for all, which you and other players inside your lobby and run the block can actually play. Since I'm playing solo, um, you, you can't really play any of these public events because they're meant for other people, and it's, it kind of sucks. But in case you don't actually want to wait for these public events to start, you can actually buy vouchers inside the in-game shop that allow you to actually pick and choose what events you actually want to start and stuff with your friends. Talking about vouchers and stuff like that, it brings me on to my next segment, the Run the Block map. Now it takes place in part of Wreck City, as you guys can see with the background and stuff like that. There seems to be a larger expanse of buildings and stuff like that, or more or less just on the edge, or you know, the coast of the city if you will. Now the map is full of all sorts of things like slide mechanics and rails that you can ride on and stuff like that, as well as just areas to parkour and stuff. The tricky but elaborate designs allow you to be creative with the types of routes you're taking, especially whenever you're doing challenges and stuff like that. And not to mention, it's honestly a pretty big map for this Reckham original, not gonna lie. Another example about the perks of having certain upgrades and stuff like that, for example, having the stomp upgrade, you basically can get a little extra boost from whenever you jump on top of cars and stuff like that if you decide to just stomp. It makes you go higher and you get more air time, etc, etc. The stomp ability is also needed to get into some parts of the map that I will be talking about very soon. So with all these little areas to parkour inside the map and stuff like that, it also leads me to talk about these, these rails. Now you can grind on these rails and there's a certain little mechanic that allows you to do so and stuff like that. If you mess up, it kicks you off the rail. It's a pretty simple mechanic, just allowing you to keep your balance as long as you keep your joystick inside the middle of that crescendo that you guys can see display on your screen whenever you're on an actual rail. It's a pretty cool mechanic and honestly kind of challenging to get the first few times to be honest with you. They're also used in challenges and stuff like that and can even give you additional boost in speed as well in speed with jumping and stuff like that. For example, if you need a checkpoint on your right, you can just push your joystick all the way to the right and the rail will push you off onto the right, but it'll also give you that speed advantage as well. Mechanics like being kicked off the grind rails allows you to shave off just a few seconds off your challenges, which can be a dramatic impact 
contact and getting you that gold or silver rank. Another cool feature with Run the Block is that you can actually tag at certain areas too. There will be a little purple square for you possibly, and there will be like this little, you know, spray can and stuff like that, and whenever you go up to these little areas, you can shake your spray can and change whatever, you know, graffiti you want to. Inside the shop, you can purchase more graffitis and stuff like that, but when you first start out, you just have the two, which is Run the Block and Up Town, as you guys can see. And then once you guys choose your transparent logo and stuff like that, all you gotta do is press trigger, and it'll start spray painting and stuff, as you guys can see. It's just a cool little tagging mechanic inside of Run the Block, of course. Be sure to let me know what you guys think. It's also a necessary objective to be able to rank up inside of Run the Block as well. Now, inside the little main area of Run the Block, as you guys can see, we have a little gazebo challenge, we have this stage, we have all these buildings, this crane and stuff like that, but if you look right here, we also have a merch booth. This side will give you some cosmetics as well as some in-game room inventory stuff, we'll talk about this after this part, but all of this are the new cosmetics inside of Run the Block, as you guys can see. Some stuff for full body avatars, some stuff for bean body, and of course, it's not too bad token-wise or price-wise. You guys can see that we have this backpack, this bucket hat, this cropped mock neck shirt, we have this curved brim hat, high top shoes, distressed jeans, RTB camera skin, velcro sneaker shoes, crossbody bag, pullover hoodie, parachute pants, and KO cola. Go to the next page, you'll see that we have this layered shirt, and that's pretty much it. I like the way it looks on full body, to be honest with you, I think it looks great. On this side of the actual shop, you need to be used T rank to be able to get these sweatpants, rank B to be able to get this beanie, rank A to get this jersey, and rank S to get this tagger's backpack. You guys can also see this graffiti tag pack, you'll get all these new graffiti tags and stuff like that, as you guys can see and stuff. In my personal opinion, I think it'd be awesome to graffiti anywhere, but I'll save that for my final thoughts in the conclusion. Now, that's not all with this actual run the block map, there's even some cool little special parts of it as well. This is where the upgrade stomp comes in handy. As you guys can see here, there's a little wreck city sewer, but if I want to get through it, all I gotta do is stomp. Now that you guys see that, you can kind of, you know, see how important the upgrades are and stuff like that, but let's check out the sewer. Now the sewer is a not so secret little area inside of Run the Block, which is basically just under the map and stuff. It has challenges to choose from, upgrade points to collect and stuff like that, and it's just this cool little sewer area under the map. At the moment, this is kind of the only secret I had really found inside of Run the Block. I haven't really seen too many easter eggs and stuff like that, but to be honest, I think I'll just wait until the public launch so more people can find that and stuff. If you find anything kooky or strange inside of Run the Block, feel free to let me know, and of course, I'll probably include it inside a video or something. But yeah, this is the sewer inside Run the Block. Now, I think I'd be doing a disservice to not only the Rackman developers, but you guys as well if I didn't mention this as well with the actual map. Now, what makes a good Rackham original is not only the map design, no, 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 but also the soundtrack. Listen, just listen. This soundtrack, absolutely amazing if not the best Requiem original soundtrack ever made. You can hate Run the Block all you want, you don't like the parkour game mode, you don't like the aesthetic, I don't care. But if you don't like the soundtrack, me and you are not friends. Now with some Requiem originals, sometimes we get little introductions of Requiem characters in the quote unquote lore. Like for example, with Showdown, we had Archie, that old guy that would talk whenever you started a match and stuff like that or join the game and whatever. We have MC Moto inside of Run the Block. All right, I'm not gonna lie, MC Moto's definitely voiced by Corbin. So there's there's no way. It's not his first time making it into the Rec Room lore, but Corbin's has killed it once again, and I love the dialogue that it just randomly happens with MC Moto in the game. MC Moto is like this influencer slash DJ person who is the Archie, essentially, or the Rec Room announcer inside of Run the Block and stuff like that. This guy will literally go from talking about, you know, certain quotes and pieces of advice to live by and stuff like that to straight advertisements from Hyper Noodle. It's insane. One of my favorite parts about MC Moto is the fact that it's also just sort of like an actual radio channel, news channel. If you're ever inside a car and you're just put on the radio and stuff like that and you listen to the radio, you'll hear the announcers talk and you hear all the sound effects and stuff like that. It's the exact same thing. When I was playing Run the Block, I found myself chuckling sometimes because it's just how amazing the dialogue was from MC Moto. I really think they killed it this time inside this Requiem original with this Requiem announcer guy. I hope, I hope he gets more updated lines because I love it. I just love to see it and I feel like it 
it makes it all the better that it's Corbin's voicing him as well. Funniest dude ever. I had to put a little segment inside this video just to talk about him because it's great. It's great, honestly. 10 out of 10 dialogue for this Rec Room character uh, I would listen to again. Now, Run the Block uses the power of Rooms 2.0 in Rec Room Studio, and it's going to be one of the first Rec Room originals that will be fully clonable, and this will be enabled a few days after launch. So not only will creators be able to access all the inner workings and see how Rec Room created Run the Block, but they'll also be able to straight up copy and directly edit their own version of the room as well. You can remix the room however you like and put your own spin on things, different areas, taller buildings, more grand rails, and maybe even a giant MC Moto shrine. This was definitely written by Corbins. The room is truly yours to edit as you see fit, and honestly, Rec Room cannot wait to see where your imagination will take you with this room. So if you're a creator and you are interested in that stuff, feel free to check it out, of course. And before I get to my final thoughts slash the conclusion for today's video, I just want to say I think I barely scratched the surface of, you know, everything inside of Run the Block. There's probably things I miss, certain things that are still unlocked yet or waiting for the actual launch date to happen. If there's things you've noticed that I didn't notice when making this video, feel free to comment them and I might even pin you as well. I know, this video comes out right as the Rec Room Original launches, so you guys are here for everything about Run the Block, but hey, your boy makes mistakes too. Now I know, Run the Block just came out and stuff like that, and this video is talking about everything Run the Block, but you don't think I'm not gonna talk about my channel memberships, do you? Essentially, if you don't know, I have channel memberships on YouTube, and they're basically just like a Patreon. They give me money every single month, and I give them perks like being shouted out in all of my videos, and sneak peeks to videos and stuff. Other than, you know, videos like this, because I can't tease them earlier than when they come out, so, um, sorry channel memberships. Now, if you guys don't know these names, get used to them, because they are my channel memberships. And these people include Nath the Pup, Kitty Kea, Cam VR, Dude, Greengrass VR, Iron Guy, Zenny, FireGod82, Baguette, Default, Kirby102, Kirby, Kobe Fans of 6 Daytrix, Nolan, The Dragon Boy, Ghastly, Garlic Bread, It's Freddy RR, Chase, Don Lee, BBB Burning Owl, Rafael Clown of the 6 9 and of course, Box David. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it greatly, and of course, people, I will catch you inside the next video. And, um, it's probably also a good time to mention that this video is sponsored, huh? That's right, this video is sponsored by AMVR, baby. AMVR has their silicone facial interface, Request 3S, which they had also sent me as well. It's just a silicone cover that goes over your stock facial cover for your MetaQuest 3S, and it has a bunch of quality of life features, like being easy to clean with effortless and quick cleaning, allowing you to easily wipe away sweat and dirt. It also has a little nose pad, which blocks light leakage and stuff like that, allowing you to stay immersed into your gaming experience. It was a perfect fit with seamless alignment and super easy installation into your actual facial interface. Not to mention, it's also skin friendly, made with irritation free material. Not only is it pressure free, allowing you to wear it for longer periods of time, AMVR sent the silicone facial cover to me, and I can actually guarantee that it is pretty comfortable. It's super soft, and it feels great to have on my actual face as well whenever I'm playing VR and stuff. The little nose flaps that blocks up the light is honestly just an added bonus as well. And coming in at about $12, you guys can buy it now on AMVR's website. Feel free to use the link inside the description as it supports me as well, and I greatly do appreciate it. Thank you AMVR for sponsoring today's video and giving me the product as well. Ah, oh, there's gotta be some food inside these trash bags or something. Uh, uh, oh! Um, the, the sponsor's done? Uh, uh, okay. Um, but back to the video? And alas, with all that being said, it brings me to my final thoughts slash the conclusion of this video. I like Run the Block. The map design is great. I like the concept of the whole parkour, and it isn't just some boring parkour that Rec Room decided to make. There's at least some sort of depth here. The sound design is good. MC Motto, the new Rec Room announcer inside this little Rec Room original, is also fire. I love to see my favorite developer be featured in such a role, honestly. The token prices inside the map shop aren't even that bad, and honestly, I kind of like the gameplay. I like the whole grinding aesthetic, if you will, of having to, you know, rank up and become the best little stunt runner that you can be. Before Run the Block came out, I saw a lot of people talking about how Reckham could just rather make a second stunt runner or some new additions to stunt runner and stuff like this, and to be honest, Run the Block is sort of like stunt runner. But stunt runner doesn't have a dash, it doesn't have a stomp, it doesn't have a double jump, it has wall run, and that that's pretty pretty much it. Stunt Runner, you're quite literally running. It's literally a race, if you will. And inside of Run the Block, yeah, you can race too, but it's more parkour. It's more about having a strategy with your route too as well, and trying to be the fastest that you can be in all of these routes. Yes, Run the Block may be similar to Stunt Runner, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, to be honest, because Run the Block introduces new mechanics into the game as well. Now, these are all the good things about this actual game that I like, but honestly, kind of one of the bad things that I don't really like is the public events. You can't really play this game solo, and
and to me personally, that kind of sucks to be honest. You need to either be with randoms or with friends and stuff to be able to complete some of the objectives that you need to be able to do, and if you're by yourself inside an instance and trying to start a public event, none of them will start. I think if there is at least one public event that you could start by yourself without any other players, I, I wouldn't even care about all the other things. It would be good, but you can't. And thus, me making this video, I can't rank up any higher than C. It kind of sucks, just some feedback that I wanted to leave and stuff like that. And I also want to say, you know, there's been this thing with newer Rackham Originals and them dying off very fast and stuff like that. I think a big part of the reason why that happens is because there's not a whole lot of updates to Rackham Originals anymore. I will start saying this every time Rackham makes a new Rackham Original, but I hope and pray that this Rackham Original gets updated. Along with other ones as well, like My Little Monsters, Make It to Midnight, etc. I want to see more content updates for this game, and other Rackham Originals just like it as well. Thinking about it now, honestly, this Rackham Original kind of gives me a My Little Monsters feel with the whole grinding mechanics of the game and stuff like that, to be honest with you. Like how whenever you rank up your actual little monster camp, it becomes bigger and you can fit more monsters and stuff like that. The more you rank up your actual player inside of Run the Block, the more upgrades you can get and stuff and become better. These upgrades can then thus allow you to shave off more time from your actual challenges, allowing you to get more rewards and etc. It's very similar to My Little Monsters in that regards and stuff like that, like the checkpoints or the objectives that are displayed on your screen and stuff and etc etc. It's not a bad Rackham original at all. I like it a lot and of course, hopefully you like it a lot as well. Considering you're watching this video and stuff like that and you may or may not have played Run the Block, what are your guys' first impressions of it so far? And of course, since you've watched all the way to this point in the video, you must love me or something, so you might as well subscribe, like the video, use my coding game, it's just SK0L, come on now. Of course, me very much and I will love you forever if you do so. And that's pretty much it, yeah, that's this entire video. If you guys want to see more Rec Room news and stuff like that, you guys can see it on that side of the screen and stuff, and I'll be talking about Run the Block hopefully in a future video as well. Thank you! And that's pretty much it, bye. <laughs>